you will see formulas in different math, science, and even social studies and business classes. Formulas show real-world relationships. They are a pattern for math operations that you can do to find a certain value. Let's look at a very simple formula. Velocity equals distance divided by time. This tells us a pattern for finding velocity. The words in the formula are called variables because their value will be different in every problem. The numbers will be different, but the pattern doesn't change. For example, if a snail travels 4 meters in 2 hours, the distance is 4 meters and the time is 2 hours. To solve, take 4 divided by 2 and get a result. Velocity equals 2 meters per hour. It would not work if you tried to put the numbers in any other order. You have to follow the pattern shown in the formula. The best way to keep from getting the operations mixed up is to start with the first step of writing the formula without changing anything. Then, as your second step, write the formula again, replacing the variables with numbers from the problem. Continue on writing a new line for each step. Most of the time, formulas use abbreviations instead of words. For example, instead of velocity equals distance divided by time, you might see v equals s over t. When you write notes about your formulas, copy the abbreviations and write what each one stands for so you don't forget. Some of the abbreviations may not be what you expect. For example, distance is abbreviated S. Some formulas have constants. For example, the formula for converting from degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius is degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 ninths, as shown in this formula. The F and C are variables. The 32 and the 5 ninths are part of the formula, so they must stay there. They don't change. If you have water with a temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit, you replace the F variable with that value. You end up with 77 minus 32 times 5 ninths and can solve. No matter what the temperature is, the constants 32 and 5 ninths don't change. Formulas could be rearranged to help you solve for any of the variables. For example, in this problem, a turtle walks with a velocity of 0.3 meters per second and keeps walking for 12 seconds. You know velocity and time and can use the formula velocity equals distance divided by time to figure out how far the turtle walked. When you write in the variables that you know, you see that distance is the unknown variable. You need to use the inverse operation to get distance by itself on one side of the equal sign. You have distance divided by 12, so multiply both sides of the equation by 12. This gives you 0.3 times 12 equals distance. The final step is to multiply the values, giving 3.6 meters equals distance. If formulas can be rearranged to solve for any of the variables, how do you know which formula you can use to solve a problem? You can only solve a problem with one unknown variable. So you need to look for a formula for which you know all of the variables except one. Here is an example problem and some formulas to choose from. A car began with a velocity of 2 meters per second. After 4 seconds, it had a velocity of 14 meters per second. What was its acceleration? You know velocity 1, time, and velocity 2. You are looking for acceleration. Which of these formulas can you use? Pause the video to think about it. First, you can eliminate any formula that doesn't have acceleration, since that is what you are solving for. Then, eliminate any formulas that have more than one unknown variable. This one has acceleration, force, and mass, and we don't know any of them. This one has both acceleration and distance, and we don't know distance. The formula that will work will let you put in your known quantities, velocity 1, time, and velocity 2, leaving acceleration as the only unknown. From watching this video, you should have learned the basics of using formulas. Watch our other videos for details on different parts of solving word problems.